Today, we're going to review two SV Boni filters, the SV220 and the SV260. Can they hold up to much more expensive filters? Are they just an option for beginners or are they not an option at all? We will look at that today. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So, good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So, before we really test these filters, I would like to give a little bit of context because, as you might know, practically all the filters that I own are from Antlia. And I'm also today absolutely convinced that from a price value point of view, Antlia is the best at the moment that you can buy. So, how did I end up? With these filters. The reason is that when I got my third Astro camera, the ASI 585 MCR, I realized that I also needed filters for this camera. And looking at my budget, I was like, probably this time it does not have to be in Clear. So I thought, why not try something cheaper? And so I ended up with these two a dual narrowband filter for Nebulas and a multi-broadband pass filter for just cancelling the light pollution when shooting galaxies or star clusters or whatever. And as you might know, I'm a fan of comparisons. Sometimes they're a little bit far-fetched, but from my point of view, better and not perfect comparison than none, because if I now shoot simply pictures with these and show them to you, What's the meaning of it? Is it good? Is it bad? If I want to market these filters, I tell you it's the best I've ever seen. But is it? And so that's why I made comparison shots. For the SV220, the dual narrowband, I compared it to the Antlia ALPT. And you can say it's unfair because while the SV220 is only 114 euros presently, the Antlia ALPT is five times more expensive with 555 euros. So we will also have to look at it in this context. But still, how much worse is it? Nobody assumes it's better, but how much worse is it than the Antlia ALPT? Is it worth paying five times more for the increase in quality. We will look at that. Also, to be fair, the Antlia ALPT is a 5 nanometer filter. This here is a 7 nanometer. But from my point of view, 5, 7 nanometer is not too far. It's not like the other one would be a 3 nanometer or something like that. The other comparison is the SV260, which I will compare to the Antlia Quad. Also here, that's not 100% the same, but it kind of takes, at least in my rigs, the same purpose. It's for shooting anything except emission nebulas. Here, the price difference is not as big. The SV260 is 179 euros, while the Antlia Quad is 288 euros. And I also have to say that I find the concept of the SV260 Really interesting because SV Boni offers two different UHC or light pollution filters the SV240 and the SV260. And the SV260, while actually it's, I think, the most expensive of the two, is for areas which are lesser light pollution. So it doesn't filter that well but it gives you a much better star quality or star color quality. While the SV240 is a little bit more narrow, but then obviously the more narrow, the more the star color quality suffers. So that they actually offer these two levels, I found highly interesting and also attractive. But what it actually means, we will look in the pictures. So these filters, they come in these card boxes. And in there is the plastic box where the filter is. So it's well protected. The filters, they look very well quality-wise. And what I find really interesting is that on both sides, they have these stickers on. It's a little bit like on a yogurt cup. And you can tear them off and then 
the filter is ready. But this is a really clever way to protect the glass from any dust, pollution, whatever. So I first time saw this on a filter and I found this is a very ingenious way how they protect the filters before you actually use them. And with that, let's go to the computer and look what I got out of them. So welcome to my computer and welcome to Pix Insight. Here are the pictures that we want to look at. We will start with the SV220, the dual narrowband filter. The rules were pretty fair. 20 exposures on 180 seconds for Antlia ALPT and the same for the SV220. Same objects, the same night shots made right after each other. So he, from that point of view, were totally fair. We will first look now at the picture with stars, and then we will look at the picture with the stars removed. By the way, nothing else was done on these pictures. These are unlinked outer stretches and nothing else. So that's the picture I shot with the SV220 of the North American Nebula. So is this good or is this bad? Hard to say, right? Obviously, we see that the bigger stars, they're quite pronounced, but otherwise we have no clue. And that's what I mean. That's why comparisons are so important. So let's compare it now with the ALPT. Boom. And when I toggle now, I think it is very, very clear from a star point of view. The stars are much, much bigger with the SV220, so much bigger halos than with the Antlia ALPT. And if I do this toggling now on a one-on-one -on -one pixel level, then it is even way more clear. It even looks blurry a little bit, but I definitely did an autofocus right before I run it, so it's not like it's autofocus. It's just the quality of the filter. And, you know, I would expect that there, that there must be a difference if a filter costs five times more than the other. So that doesn't mean that the SP220 is bad. It just means that there is a difference. And, and if anybody goes like, oh, it's not worth buying a, an Antlia and just go with the SP Boni, you get the same. No, you don't get the same. But it doesn't mean that what the SP Boni delivers is bad because this is now pixel peeping. We're in a one-on-one -on -one level. And there is something else that we should consider. If you play the game right, you do not use the dual narrowband stars. You shoot separate RGB stars. And from that point, the star size of a dual narrowband filter is not so important. Much more important is how good does it actually capture the nebulosity? And that's what we want to look at right now. So this is what the SV220 has done with the stars removed. And there is quite a lot of nebulosity. If you look around it, even here in a fainter region, we see it. So let's compare it now to the Antlia ALPT. And that's the ALPT. And if you look at it now on this scale, I see it a tiny little bit and you probably don't see any difference at all with the YouTube compression. So let's zoom in and look at it more close up. We're now on a one to two pixel level. And if you, for example, look here, I hope even YouTube that's visible, that this is way sharper. Also from a noise point of view, there's much less noise with the ALPT. And also, for example, if you look at this area here, you see that it's much clearer with the ALPT than with the SV220. The good example is here where we have very, very faint nebulosity. As this is again the SV220. When I go to the Antlia, for example, look at here. Here, there's practically no nebulosity visible. With the Antlia, we nicely see here the strands. And if we zoom even more in on a two to one level, if you look here, it is clear how big the difference is. 
here it's all just really faint and if I go on the Antlia it's very nicely pronounced it's very nicely visible this area which is here just just mush but this again is on a two to one level usually you never go in this zoom factor so if we zoom out again and we look at it it looks actually nice and from that point of view this filter is absolutely sufficient for a beginner for somebody who has to look a little bit closer to his or her budget. So I definitely see some great use cases for this filter. And quite honestly, 114 euros for that performance, that's just amazing. So we're now doing exactly the same game with the SV260. But here, after we looked at the whole picture, we will only look at the stars because with a filter like that, you usually don't care so much about the nebulosity, but you want a nice stars, which means not too big halos, nice star color. Let's see. But first, let's look at the whole picture. Again, unaltered. This is the SV260. And this is the quad. I think what we see here is obviously that the nebulosity is much stronger with the quad than with the SV260, but that actually in this case is intended because the quad is a more narrow filter than the SV260 and hence obviously can capture the nebulosity better, but that's not really what we want with these filters. That's a nice side effect, but that's not really what matters here. That's why I really want to switch now to the stars. And this is now already zoomed in on a level one to two. And so let's toggle the stars. And we also see here, obviously, that the Antlia has less halos than the SV260. That's clear. But what we also see, and let's take, for example, the biggie here in the middle, that it actually looks here too reddish. And just from a colorization point of view, I like the color also over the whole field here better of the SV260 than of the Antlia Quad. And also the halos here do not look as extreme as with the SV220. And there's also a price difference as we have seen. So this is the more expensive filter and I think it pays off. It has a better halo control and I kind of really like the very nice differentiation in the colorization of the stars. So I haven't tried it yet on galaxies, for example, but I think it will do a very, very good job and also for star clusters. And that's also what I really want to use this filter for. But so from that point, I would say even the stars are a little bit bigger. But I think of these two, I almost would say I prefer the SV260. And so that's already everything that I wanted to show you here. So I found these findings very interesting, I have to say. And it's also good, especially because it's different outcomes for the same brand. So here you cannot say the brand is good, the brand is bad. It depends on the filters. Will I keep them? Will I use them? Yes, I will actually use both of them with my 585 MC Air, but I have to make this caveat. I will only use the SV220 because the way I use it is actually only for getting the HA within galaxies, but I will not shoot dedicated emission nebulas with this rig. And for just extracting the HA, the SB220 is good enough. For, for dedicated emission nebula shooting, it would definitely not match my quality standards. But I think from a power pricing point of view, for beginners, for people who have a lower budget, it's actually an amazing opportunity 
entering this hobby and anyway getting the hand on such a dual narrowband filter. So it definitely has its right of existence and I think in the same way we should be thankful that we have providers who provide really high quality cutting edge stuff to us on the other side. It's great if we have brands who really care about the people who rather want to go low budget so that that also they can actually pursue this amazing hobby. If you're interested into more information about the Antlia Quad, then I would actually have here the video where you can see everything about this quite unique filter. I hope this was helpful. See you next time. Clear skies.